Our daughter has passed away. In a somber voice, my mother conveyed this to my husband over the phone. What? Our daughter? You mean Madison? Yes, my daughter. Your wife, Madison. She's gone. Even over the phone, I could tell that my husband was in a state of shock. My husband's actions towards me had been incredibly cruel. Now is the time for him to face the consequences. My name is Madison, a 35-year-old housewife. I was raised with my younger sister under the care of our father, who worked as a bus driver, and our stay-at-home mother. My father was always kind, and my mother had a gentle personality, so our family relationships were good. My responsible younger sister is still single and focused on her career. Jacob, my husband, and I met at work and fell in love. He was tall, handsome, and kind, making him quite popular among our colleagues. As a playing and a timid person, it didn't take long for me to fall for him when he approached me. According to him, he preferred someone with a good personality rather than someone glamorous. Soon after, we got married, and I became a housewife to support my husband. We were blessed with a daughter named Lily. Soon after, with the financial assistance from my parents, we were able to build a nice house. I should have been at the height of happiness. That is until I discovered my husband's true nature. After our daughter was born, my husband's attitude gradually became more arrogant. First, he stopped calling me by my name. Hey. Whenever he had something to say, he would address me like this. After giving birth. I struggled to lose weight, and my husband started mocking me. Aren't you ashamed of having that kind of figure? You chubby old lady. Around this time, my husband started coming home late at night or early in the morning. I started noticing a scent of perfume on his suit. Since it became a daily occurrence. I finally confronted my husband about it. Taking care of a child is tough for me too. Instead of going out drinking every day, could you spend more time with our child? Then my husband suddenly became angry and threw a chair at me. I don't drink because I like it. It's part of my job. Why don't you understand? You fat slob. You're the one who has an easy life, doing the same things every day at home. If you have complaints, go on and work. But you can't, can you? My husband shouted at me in a loud voice. After that. I became too afraid to say anything that would anger my husband. At the same time, our monthly living expenses were reduced to only five hundred bucks. You're just a bored housewife, right? Figure out managing everything with this, okay? Naturally, I couldn't sustain our living with just that. So I started dipping into my savings from when I was single to make ends meet. My life was becoming more difficult day by day. However, when I thought about my younger daughter, I couldn't bring myself to leave the house. But the truth was that I couldn't ignore the pressing need for solution. Utilizing my design skills from my previous job, 
I secretly started doing freelance work from home. Before I knew it, I was earning a salary comparable to my husband's. With the financial issues resolved, several years has passed without us divorcing. It was on a certain holiday when Lily turned three years old. My husband's phone started ringing while he was in the bath. Unusually, he had left it out on the desk. I ignored it at first, but it kept ringing persistently. So I quietly peeked and saw a woman's name on the screen. I realized that my husband had another woman. When my husband came out of the bath, I calmly told him, Your phone was ringing. I could tell that my husband's expression changed. Did you look at my phone? Huh? No. I didn't. I lied to my husband as naturally as possible. In response, my husband entered the bedroom with a disgruntled expression. Unconsciously, tears started streaming down my face. I thought to myself, I can't let it end like this. I started secretly recording conversations with my husband using an IC recorder during this time. Furthermore, I hired a private investigator and obtained solid evidence of his infidelity. When our daughter turned five years old, the decisive event finally happened. Even now, thinking about it terrifies me. There was an abnormal increase in days when my husband wouldn't come home. He would always claim it was due to business trips. But as someone who worked in the same company, I knew there were no such business trips in his department. What an insult. I had reached my limit with him, going to see his affair partner even while lying with a lie that I could easily see through. During this time, I seriously contemplated divorce. That morning, my husband suddenly announced while coming down the stairs that he had to go on a business trip. Since there wouldn't be any decent meals at home, I might as well eat something good on my business trip. With his snide remark, I finally exploded with anger. What did you say? What do you mean there won't be any decent meals? Stop joking. I make dinner every day, even though you rarely bother to eat it. And where do you go while claiming it's a business trip? I have the evidence that you... The moment I said that, my husband flew into a rage. Shut up. Stop saying unnecessary things. He said that and pushed me forcefully. My husband looked down at me, splawled on the floor and I easily left the house. I was surprised by the sudden turn of events as my head hit the floor. However, shortly after, my consciousness started fading little by little, and everything before me turned completely dark. When I regained awareness, I found myself on a hospital bed. My daughter and parents were looking at me with worried expressions. Mommy, are you okay? Uh, Lily? Did you help me, honey? Ow! As I tried to hastily get up, 
pain shot through my entire body. According to my parents, miraculously, the injuries were not severe, and they said I could be discharged the same day. Yeah, I called Daddy because Mommy got hurt. I told Daddy to come back, but Daddy said he couldn't because of work. So I called Grandma. Taking over for our tearful daughter, my mother continued. So, I called the ambulance. I was really scared, you know. What happened, Madison? I asked the nurse to take my daughter outside the hospital room. Then I confided my parents about the countless cruel things I had endured from my husband. Both of them listened solemnly, and then my father spoke. I see. You don't have to endure anymore. Come back home. And we need to settle things with him properly. By revealing everything to my parents, I finally made up my mind to put an end to this marriage. Our family held a meeting right there, and decided to launch a big act of retaliation against my husband. The next day, my husband called my cell phone. My mother answered the call. Our daughter has passed away. My mother delivered the news to my husband in a summer voice. The phone was on speaker mode. Of course, I was also recording the conversation. What? Our daughter? You mean Madison? Yes, my daughter. Your wife, Madison. She's gone. I could sense my husband's panic even through the phone. My mother continued to pile on him. It seems that she fell and hit her head hard on the floor. Do you have any idea what could have caused it? Uh, no. Then my husband, with a faint voice of tears, said, "She was as cheerful as usual this morning. Why did this happen?" I suppressed the urge to scream, "You're lying, bitch!" Anyway, where are you? My mother interrogated my husband with anger. Well, you see, I'm currently on a business trip. It will take me half a day to get back home. Come back immediately, then. We're going home with our daughter now. My mother hung up the phone after saying that. We hurriedly made our way back home. At the same time. I quickly gathered the evidence of his past infidelity, including the voice recorder, and consulted with a lawyer. While I was at it, I checked our bank accounts and life insurance policies, and confirmed that my husband hadn't made any changes yet. Preparing for a confrontation with my husband, I evacuated my daughter to my sister's house. And waited for my husband's return with my parents. After a while, my husband arrived home. What? Who is she? I widened my eyes in disbelief. To my astonishment, my husband returned home accompanied by another woman. He, who had been informed of my death, was left speechless by the fact that I was still alive. 
Medicine? You are alive? Why? More importantly, who is that person? What? You... You can't be serious. Did you deceive me? My husband's voice was filled with shock. Not as much as you did. So, who is that person? Weren't you all supposed to be at your family home? What are you talking about? This is my home, isn't it? Forget about that for now. Who is that person? No, it's not like that. This is someone from a business deal. Just as my husband started to explain, I laid out the evidence of his affair that I had obtained through a private investigator on the table. According to my investigation, this person seems to be a woman in these photos. What is this? They are probably fake photos of something. Fake, you say? Well, then why don't you take a look at the dates on the photos? And this is what I wrote in my diary. My husband is on a business trip. When I called the company, they said he took paid leave. Who was deceiving whom? You have some nerve saying that. And why is she here today? All of days. Well, there was a matter that needed attention. Just as my husband was about to respond, the woman interrupted. I'm Anna. I've been dating Jacob with the intention of getting married. Are you Jacob's older sister? What? His sister? I'm Jacob's wife. Surprised by my response, she spoke in a shocked voice. W wife? Jacob told me that he lives with his sister. What are you talking about? I'm his wife. As I responded with disbelief, my husband started to look frightened. However, even in this situation, my husband stumbled and attempted a feeble counterattack. Well, there's a reason for this. I'll explain later. I promise. It seemed like she understood the situation by now. Jacob, you told me that your sister has passed away, didn't you? What does it mean that you have a wife? She confronted my husband fiercely. I also immediately confronted my husband. For these past few years, you've been cheating on me behind my back. And you even pushed me and caused me injury. Huh? Jacob? Did you really do such a terrible thing to your wife? Unbelievable. So the same thing could happen to me too, right? Anna said with a half-exasperated expression. That's not true. I love you. I really do. Love her? So that means you admit to cheating on me, right? I joined in the confrontation. Uh, n no, it's just that... So this is what they call a chaotic situation. My husband panicked, but I remained calm. My parents were looking at my husband with even colder and more distant gazes. 
There was not a trace of love left for him within me. Divorce. Let's end this and go our separate ways. I'll also break up with him. Simultaneously, Anna and I discarded my husband on the spot. Just pushing me alone is already a serious crime. Furthermore, there is evidence of your infidelity. So, be prepared for a huge amount of compensation. To think you were a married man, I truly despise you from the bottom of my heart. I also demand a suitable apology from you, so be prepared for that. Anna was also furious and directed her anger towards my husband. In response, my husband brazenly started making desperate excuses. It's not my fault. The medicine fell on the floor. She tripped on her own. Do you have any evidence that I pushed her? Is there anything to prove it? In disbelief at my husband's attitude, I took out an IC recorder. It contained a vivid recording of a sound when he pushed me. In addition, all the past awful remarks he made towards me are perfectly recorded here. There's no escaping from it anymore. You idiot. Furthermore, Anna added, I have email evidence as well. It proves that we met at a matchmaking party and that he referred to you as his sister. Unable to make any more excuses, my husband finally lost his temper. Shut up, you fat cow. If you were gone, I was planning to be with Anna using your life insurance. She is the daughter of an executive from a business partner. If we got married, my promotion was guaranteed. It's all your fault, Madison. My husband started throwing whatever was within reach at me and even attempted to grab me. At that moment, my father swiftly restrained him in a stranglehold. My father is skilled in judo. Then, with my husband immobilized, Anna delivered a double slap to his face. This one is for me, and this one is for Madison. Saying so, she ended it with a powerful knee kick to his sensitive area. As he writhed in agony, I whispered quietly to him. Regarding the life insurance, my parents are beneficiaries, considering the worst case scenario. Either way, he won't get any money from me. By the way, do you remember who the house is registered to? My parents put money into this house. So, it's under their name. If you understand, then leave quickly, okay? Anna added fuel to the fire. So, you were dating me because I'm the daughter of an executive. It's a shame things didn't go as you planned. Goodbye. After a while, the divorce with my husband was finalized. I received all the compensation I could get. Instead of my ex-husband leaving, I ended up living with my parents. Subsequently, my husband's relationship with Anna became known at his company and he was demoted. Naturally, 
Her parents were furious, and they broke up as well. Furthermore, even at his new position, my ex-husband couldn't get along with colleagues and ended up resigning. Anna also demanded compensation, and his retirement funds were nearly depleted. Currently, my ex-husband is in the process of job hunting. Unaware of all this, Anna and her parents discussed it, and she ended up apologizing to me with a letter and even paid damages. Seeing Anna crying and apologizing to me, even though she wasn't at fault, I honestly felt sorry for her. By the way, she soon met someone through a matchmaking and got married to a genuinely single and sincere man. I was relieved to hear that she was able to marry successfully. As for me, my freelance design work from home was going well, and I succeeded in starting my own company. Initially, it was a small company with a few employees, but our performances steadily grew. Recently, the number of employees has increased significantly, and we plan to buy a building next year to expand the company. As for my daughter, she didn't feel lonely even after her father left. In fact, she strongly recognized him as a bad person who didn't come to help when mommy got hurt and never wanted to see him again. In our peaceful and harmonious days without fights, my daughter seems to be growing happily. The other day, filled with gratitude, I invited my parents and sister on a family trip. Not only we could relax at a leisurely resort, but we also found financial stability and peace of mind. I genuinely felt happy. Hey mommy, I want a cat. My daughter sat while eating a meal during our trip. A cat? That sounds nice. Well, then let's go find a partner for you, Lily. Oh, a cat. We love cats too. I wonder what kind of cat it would be good. A few weeks after that conversation, a new member joined our family. It was a small and mischievous, adorable kitten. I can still hear my daughter's lively voice playing with the kitten today. After that, more good news followed as my sister got married. She finally met a kind and successful businessman. Moreover, she's expecting a baby. So our home will become even more lively from now on. May these happy days continue for as long as possible.